All right. Ready? And so we welcome you to this uh, uh, talk on, uh, uh, for this Sunday morning, and it's uh, the commendation. Uh, if you are being victimized, but not because you are claiming your rights under certain employment legislation, then the issue may be harassment or bullying in the workplace. And that's uh, sad. That can happen uh, today, and it can. Uh, it has not been easy. And I've heard of uh, uh, some who have even lost their job or had to resign their work because of it. You know. And sometimes it's because they are really, oh, they don't accept the terms of what they have been asked to do. The commendation. In 1 Peter 2.19, for this is commendable, if because of conscience towards God, one endures grief, uh, suffering wrongfully. Now that's quite hard, isn't it? Our pressures at work. And let's face it, People have great pressures at work. I, I talked to uh, uh, my daughter-in-law who is a teacher and she has great pressures at work. It's not easy uh, being a teacher. It's not easy uh, for to uh, be uh, in the workplace today. It uh, can be difficult. And it's anyone who is an easier at work then should be very thankful for that, you know, that they have uh, uh, an easy. Or reasonably easy. It's never easy. There's always some something in work that we uh, don't like. I didn't like, you know, when I was an insurance man, uh, bringing, uh, you know, paying out the, the death claim, you know, when someone died, having to do it. I knew that was part of my work to do that uh, as a home service insurance agent. And I had to oftentimes uh, bring uh, the payment, uh, the the, the policy who had uh, for, for their, uh, because they had passed on. Uh, the policy may have been just a savings policy, uh, you know, but uh, uh, with a little bit of insurance, but uh, there it is, if something unforeseen happened then. So there it is, but so there's great pressures, there are things in work that we oftentimes are not too happy to do. And they, you know, they suffer employee and employer harassment. We, we know that, you know, that uh, uh, again, uh, others have been uh, uh, harassed or have difficulties from another em employee in the company. And uh, that's hard to, to, to get around and to, to cope with, you know. So the citizens' information will explain your rights. They're, they're pretty good at explaining it all out and, uh, and helping people. And there was, of course, the first welfare, uh, you know, uh, and who, you know, would have started the first welfare that took place uh, for, for the workplace. Uh, and that's quite interesting, you know, uh, how that happened. And of course, usually it was Christians who were at the forefront of uh, encouraging uh, a change in society, you know, like the reform of the prisons uh, and, and like uh, the nurse, uh, uh, Florence Nightingale, you know, and the improvements in, in the nursing and in the, the medical uh, services. And so, but there were Christians who, who were in the forefront of this. And this was a Christian who is in the forefront of the here too, you say. What was his name? Well, you haven't had maybe a tin of beans. Well, Heinz Beans. Well, that of course was uh, <coughs> uh, the one who started that was Henry uh, J. Heinz, you know. And that was quite something, you know, that he, uh, he, he uh, started that business. And he, he made great rules regarding it, you know, uh, regarding the business, you know. But it was uh, the first staff welfare. And what was, you know, the first staff uh, welfare? Um, I a little bit prepared, but I uh, omitted to, to get my uh, spectacles. Uh, so I'll have to uh, see, uh, you know, it's part of my, uh, what would you call it, uh, uh, 
uh, part of the uh, uh, TMB, isn't it? Too many birthdays. So, well, he was, of course, Henry J. Hines, was one of the first American companies to introduce staff welfare facilities. The founder insisted that the firm provided staff with dining rooms, locker rooms, dressing rooms, gymnasia, uh, swimming pools, uniforms, free hospital and dental treatment, free life insurance, and further education facilities. The result was that few people were left the sprawling Heinz Empire, who ever left the sprawling Heinz Empire at Pittsburgh, Pittsburgh or the branch factories. At the center of it all, the founder remained. In the words of one of his executives, a monument of inner peace. And so, that was the, the legacies and the benefit, and that was, of course, a story there, a brief story, by men of purpose, uh, you know, read that book, uh, Peter Masters. Right, and so it, it's great to have some of these things, you see, to, to remind us, you know, and uh, to help us, uh, and to remind, remember that uh, Christians were in the forefront of many things. Right. So Matthew 5.10, blessed are those who are persecuted for righteousness sake, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. I have to remember that when we are going through the difficulties, it's not easy for going through the difficulties and it's happening all over the world and uh, it's quite sad. So an employer accused me for my attitude of prayer in church. You know, I got a shock about that one time. When he he uh, he uh, he accused me that he thought I shouldn't be bowing my head and praying in church. That it was, of course, we happened to be going uh, to the same church, you know, <laughs> and that was in my early con uh, conversion de converted days, and I was still going to the original church, of course, that I had uh, right. So our suffering wrongfully in one Peter two twenty. For what credit is it if when you are beaten for your faults, you take it patiently? Is there a, no credit? There's no credit for that, you see. Uh, if you're doing something that's not right, uh, then uh, and uh, you, you can take it patiently. Well, that's quite good, you know. But um, it, it, of course, is no credit, no help. There's no benefit. No benefit in that, you know. Uh, no credit for suffering for your own mistakes. Yeah. Right. Slaves and workers were beaten, you see, for their errors. You know. And uh, they're beaten maybe sometimes, even they didn't make an error. Beaten in different ways. They were misused and mistreated in so many different ways. Our sufferings rightfully. You must remember, you see, that this is written in a time when slavery was uh, very prominent, especially in the Roman Empire. And, uh, you know, only those who could, by the way, or uh, were born as Romans were, were free. The other people were slaves. And so many people were made slaves. And uh, they could be treated well by and, and get many great benefits from their master, their uh, employer. But uh, in some cases, they did not. And so, the good and bad slave owners, then, you see. They would own them, you know. It'd be power. They'd go to the slave market and they would buy. When this slave would go on the stand for sale, they'd offer a price for it, you know. And so the highest bidder got, you know, depending on how good the thinker, uh, a good worker he would be for them. Right. And so, note uh, here, uh, verse 18. Servants, be submissive to your masters with all fear, not only to the good and gentle, but also to the harsh. So there had to be, uh, that was quite some instruction, you know, that Peter gave, uh, you know, to uh, the listeners, to his people there, that he was... Uh, uh, speaking to. And so it's important to be submissive, you see. 
submissive is uh, to uh, accept and to go along with it, you know, and submit peacefully. And reverencing, you see, you know, fear, with fear, you see, you're reverencing them, you know. Uh, because, you see, it's a, uh, what? It's some, you know, the reverencing was because of their, uh, it was God's will to do that. Uh, it may not have been easy, but uh, yet, you know, God would honour them for, for their stance. And some slave owners were harsh. Oh, they were very, very bad. You know, no doubt about it. In 1 Peter 2.20, but when you do good and suffer, if you take it patiently, this is commendable before God. God will commend you. And that uh, is it. And uh, many of those, uh, especially in America, uh, slaves, uh, you know, sang their way. We have the Negro uh, spirituals, uh, and they were great, uh, you know, they were quite... Uh, the great songs that they made, and it did help them through it in praising God through their time of difficulties, you know. So, converted slaves were terribly abused, you know. They would look down on them, you see. They didn't like them, the, the change in their lives. They'd try to do a good job, of course, you know. And, uh, but they were very badly abused. They refused to take part, of course, in the pagan worship. And if they refused to take part in the pagan worship, the masters did not like it because they wanted all to go along with them. Many people uh, you see today, even in, in society, uh, they don't like you being a Christian, you know, or different from them. Uh, and they don't like that, you know. They're not happy with that. Uh, they, they feel terrible, you know. They think, um, <clears throat> I suppose, I got accused of not fitting in with the different things, like uh, when, when the customs and uh, uh, Halloween or something like that, you see, uh, and I didn't go along with it, uh, then uh, uh, I didn't offer uh, wood for th things for the fire, for the burning, you know, that sort of thing, you see. So uh, that was, uh, uh, you know, you would not be too happy with that. So we are commended then for suffering patiently. If we're suffering patiently and, uh, you know, and in the will of the Lord, you know, and at all, uh, God will commend you. Blessed are you, you know, when, when you are uh, persecuted. And men say all kinds of evil against you falsely. For my name's sake, he says. And why? What's the reward? For great is your reward in heaven. I, I know it's uh, uh, our rewards are out of this life, but there it is, the great reward then for that. Uh, we might be, find it hard to take it all in. And so then our calling to what? What are we called to? Well, we're called to live in this world and that life, you know. And we're called to be a good uh, witnesses, you know. In 1 Peter 2.21, for this you were called. You know. What does that mean? Well, it means the Christian is a witness in the world. The Christian may be the only Bible that uh, some employers or some people will read. For to this you are called, because Christ also suffered for us, leaving us an example that you should follow in his steps. So Christ also had a hard time, suffered too. It's a terror there, isn't it? Uh, and we appreciated uh, Miss Cathy reading uh, um, Psalm 22. There is a mind of Christ, uh, a prophecy of Christ's crucifixion, all that happened him on the cross and how he went through. And all there brought out there beforehand, I'm sure the uh, Psalmist David didn't understand what he was writing or what it could mean. Yeah, yeah, may have been going through a difficult patch. All right, too. Uh, and did have difficulties. But uh, it's really pointing forward, you see, more so that our Lord Jesus, uh, we're told, would have uh, quoted this psalm on the way to the cross and on the cross. And even some of them can crawl back on him, you know, that he was the Christ, save yourself and us. You know, that, uh, so uh, there it is. Um, we, we, he had to suffer, 
Uh, we will have to suffer in life, you know, because Christ has suffered. Our calling to what? Well, it's because Christ has suffered for our sin. Suffered in this life. Suffered in the ordinary ways of life, you know, against people. And there were always at them and after me. He never had an easy life. He had an easy way, you know. They didn't like, you see, what he said and taught and his, his way of life and the, the simplicity of it all, you see. And uh, it wasn't a case of a working your way and doing works and, and laws that they were setting up, you know. But uh, it was, uh, you know, a different form of, uh, uh, you know, a different way he was uh, obedience to God and following the Lord Jesus and listening to his example. He was the great example in life. How did Christ suffer for us? Well, that is the main, the great question, isn't it? In Hebrews 2, 14, 15, Inasmuch then, as the children have partaken of flesh and blood, the children of God, the, our children by creation, he has made us. And we have the same flesh and blood as the Savior had do, of course. He was born of the Blessed Virgin. He himself, likewise, as it, Christ himself, likewise shared in the same. That through death, he might destroy him who has the power of death. That is the devil. And release those who, well, you see, the first thing he is doing is to, to destroy, is to defeat death. Defeat hell. He's going to cast him into the hell, into the pit. It's designed for him and his followers forever and ever. <coughs> Excuse me. And so he was he would destroy him. Yeah, through death, he might destroy him. Because you see, well, what what's the good is that a man dying on a cross? Well, you see, he died to pay the penalty for our sin, to save us. And to rise victoriously over it, you see, that death did not hold him. The power of death, who has the, that's what, you see, what is it saying there? It's saying that the devil has the power of death in him. And so many throw their life away because the devil has taken them over. And they, they've lost the whole purpose of living. And release those who through fear of death were all their lifetime subject to bondage. And so, I know so many have a great fear of death, and it is, it is a problem, isn't it? You know. And uh, the great thing is, you see, uh, to be freed then, you see, from that. And, uh, and not in bondage to it, not in hell by it. That is the great thing. So Jesus Christ has come, come to do some great and wonderful things for us, you see, and to bless us abundantly. Our example then, in, it all, in conclusion, our example. How do we manage then? What do we do? Uh, we saw already how it's difficult. Uh, it was difficult for those people trying to keep the laws and, and uh, uh, especially living the Christian life under these pagan rulers. <laughs> so what could they do? And they were there to to maintain laws and to have a better life for us, you know. But uh, it wasn't always so. But, uh, when it came, the, the crunch came to the crunch then, uh, there was the problems, you know. And uh, the emperor wanted emperor worship and times that didn't quite, uh, some of those people had to pay the supreme sacrifice, the ultimate sacrifice of giving their lives on the, the you know, by the word martyr, button to the stake. We have to follow Jesus, aren't we? That's the main thing, his example, following him. But it's not just an example, you know. It's known that he died to save us and to redeem us. It's by his, he, he died and paid the price of our sin by his precious blood on the cross and his repentance and faith in him. It's not just a person to follow. Yes, it is to some extent a person to follow, a great example in his whole life. But it's the great thing he done for us in his death. 
And so we have to preach the unsearchable riches of Christ. We have to preach Christ died for our sins according to the scriptures and that he was raised again according to the scriptures. In Mark 8, 34, when he had called the people to himself with his disciples also, he said to them, whoever desires to come after me, let him deny himself and take up his cross and follow me. And the cross of suffering. Now, this can be looked at in different ways. My cross. Oh, well, you know, this or that would be my cross. But you see, the cross here, you see, is where you are treated wrongly for being a follower of Jesus. The cross of uh, the gospel. The cross uh, that today, you see, that we can be uh, taken up for different things. And uh, speaking the good news of the gospel. And people might not like it, but it's the good news to save and to redeem people, you know. Uh, and we're not going to accuse anybody, uh, but the accusation is that all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God, the Bible says. And so whoever desires to come after Jesus Christ, let him deny himself, take up his cross and follow me. And that's the following, you see, it is, you know. And we have to be sure of that. There are groups who talk about following, uh, follow, following Jesus, like uh, yeah, follow his example, uh, you know, Cuneites uh, uh, or, or some others, you see. And uh, uh, they just want to do, do good works. But it's, it's salvation, isn't it? It's faith in the living Christ. A new life in him, born again by his spirit and washed in his blood. In Isaiah 53, he was oppressed. He was afflicted, yet he opened not his mouth. He was led as a lamb to the slaughter, and as a sheep before her, shearers is silent. So he opened not his mouth. As there, you see, he was so calm, so quiet. He took it all so patiently, without a word. Without a word of complaint, you know. How amazing. How, and there it's all uh, in graphic details, you know, he was treated like a murderer. He was treated like the scum of the earth. And, and uh, treated so badly, uh, you know, the dogs and all those that talk about there that uh, dealt with him. And so, Hebrews 9.24 for Christ has not entered the holy place made with hands. That's not the, the ordinary temple or tabernacle. They were just copies of the true. But he's entered into heaven itself. Now to appear in the presence of God for us. He's at the right hand of the Father. He, he is our intercessor. He's gone before and he's praying for us. And that's why we pray in Jesus' name, because he's the one who is bringing those prayers before the Father in heaven in the way that the Father can accept them, because they're only acceptable through the death of Christ and his great sacrifice for us. The commendation. What a commendation he can bring upon us. How wonderful that such a one will commend us, you know. Yes, it's a difficult life, but he has promised to come into this commendation. Great promise here. Christ is himself commended for what he's done by God the Father in heaven. The perfect sin bearer, you see. He was the perfect sin bearer. And in 1 Peter 2, who committed no sin, nor was deceit found in his mouth. It so impressed Peter, you see. Now, you know, he, he did go along to see all that happened to Jesus, you know. And when he denied him, he went out and he wept bitterly. You know. He was so sad. He was so repentant. He was restored, of course. The commendation. Christ's great vicarious atonement. What is that? Vicarious. Well, you get in some churches to call the, the leader a vicar. Christ's great vicarious atonement. 
But you see, <clears throat> a vicar is one who should there in the place of Christ, you see. And so he's Christ has suffered for us. You know, he, he's took our place. You know. He's, uh, and of course, the real vicar of Christ is not the Pope. The real vicar of Christ is the Holy Spirit. He's the one that's sent here in place of Christ to help us understand these things. And it's by his, uh, uh, you know, guidance and the help of the Holy Spirit that he sent alongside to help us. That is the great thing. So Christ, it was Christ's great death, atoning uh, death on the cross for us, paid the price of our sins, gave us this freedom from bondage and fear and all that of death. And so we want to thank you for, for, for listening and uh, for maybe following on online too as well. I pray that it'll be a great benefit. Um, not because me, it'll be no benefit to me. My benefit is only that I am trusting in Jesus. I have to be trusting fully. And if I'm saying, oh, well, you know, I've done a great job or anything like that, it's no use. No, it's not that. It's what Christ has done. And he must get the honor and the glory and the praise. And so you can get further um, <coughs> help there or uh, discussion, you know, messages. So let's pray. Our gracious and loving Heavenly Father, we thank you for your goodness. We pray, Lord, your blessing, and we thank you for your great atoning death for us on the cross of Calvary. We ask, O oh Lord, your blessing and your direction, and we pray, Lord, you will guide us this day and apply your word to our hearts. Because, Lord, you are commended, but then we are commended when we um, follow you wholeheartedly and trust you uh, and uh, endeavor to uh, be uh, to endure the great trials that we may have in life. So be near us and guide us and help us and strengthen us through it all. We pray in Jesus' name and for his sake and glory. Amen. Amen.